video on hey all right so it's been a quiet week and Lake will be gone uh, I miss Garrison I don't know he's can't see him being really as creepy as they said he was even though he looked like a creep oh uh, he's just played one what do I know maybe he was really a creep anyway that's not what we're talking about today what we're talking about today is a project that we started that we haven't finished yet and that is the bench power supply out of the old Bakelite radio. As you can see, I've got this going finally. Now, I'm in the middle of this project still, and this is, it's been a couple weeks. It was since I really did any major work on this, but that's how it goes out here because that's what happens in life. I fixed my buddy's radio, I fixed the light, I did a bunch of other stuff. Christmas is t happening, so I have other things going on. I can't just spend all my time out here. So I dilly-dally and I pick and I poke and I get out here for half an hour at a time and I do stupid things. But I want this to be a good product so I'm not rushing it at all and I'm working on it a little bit by a little bit. And I guess that's going to be something that I want to talk about a little bit about the philosophy of what I'm doing with these videos that nobody's really watching. And that is to show, these, these are not instructional videos and these are not how-to videos. These are, it's almost a, blah, a vlog kind of thing but not really because what I'm trying to do is show this is how real people solve problems when they're tinkering out in their garage because I'm trying to push anybody that's sitting on the edge that's sitting in their office that is watching YouTube videos all day long going, oh man, oh man, oh man, and then not going out in the garage and actually trying anything because they think they just can't get over the hump or that these things are just a little bit too polished or whatever. And you know, you watch these videos and God, I love them all. And you know, I'm not even going to name them, but you know that the, the crew of the middle-aged guys that are out there cantankerously making videos or humorously making videos or however they're making the videos, just, just putting the information out there. This is what I'm doing. This is how you do it. Follow me. I'll show you what's going on. I got plenty of knowledge that I built up over the last 40 years, and I'm ready to spit it back out. And since nobody wants to talk to me in person anymore, I'm going to make YouTube videos and put them out there. And... So what I find about all those guys though, well, most of them is they'll make a project and they'll start it from, from start to finish and it'll be in one video and it'll be how to do this. And I don't know how long it takes them to do that if it, they film it over weeks or if they just do it all in one shot in a couple of hours and then edit it the way that they do or whatever. But there's not a lot of actual flow and there's a lot of things that they, that's glossed over, like a lot of that stuff, which probably isn't interesting in, in to watch every video about, but Sometimes, and they go, oh, you just have to download the code and do this and bloop, and then it works. And it's like, wait a minute, hmm. But anyway, I'm just trying to get an idea of the flow of how things really work. I had to put this project down. I had to work on other things for a while. This is also a project that I really want to come out well, so I put a lot of time and effort into it. As I was saying before, this is this is a a test piece that I was doing out of the out of this uh, leftover flooring. That's the wood grain that. I was learning how to use the router, learning the proper spacing, learning the right drill holes to drill for the components that I had, laying them out, trying to find the best way. Uh, I ended up, this is the, my final for the one piece that has, that has to be up. It, it, the plastic sits here and then it mounts to the back and comes through and it's open and it's, this has to be fairly, fairly precise cut. So that's why I practice it a bunch of times and I finally think that I'm going to do it. Now before I do this cut again, I will practice it again because this is something that I'm not, not good at this. I'm not a professional carpenter or anything. I'm not using routers all day. I'm not uh, uh, one of those guys that's out there fabricating things all the time. So I've got to practice if I want it to come out good. And usually what I do is I just hack it because I don't care and what it looks like and I just, oh, I can get it, but I know how to do this. And it, it always comes out messed up, like looking like the first tries on things. This is where I'm gonna put the USB port. It's gonna look like this, um, which is an interesting little thing. I tried that over two or three tries and, and now this is gonna be it and I'll practice that again. But anyway, so practice makes purpose perfect and it serves a purpose and help me get better at things. Now, the other thing I did is I, I traced out my patch and thanks for the zoom Canon. Um, you're awesome. I guess I should have bought a better lens. Anyway, you probably can't see it because it's pencil marks but I, I gritted it off, found a center by doing some stuff, made an artificial. Now this is the thing this thing here is not square. Uh, the, 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 this thing is not square so I had to kind of force a square on it by making a level. I was trying to do it on the thing like this and it just wasn't working so I laid it all out 
And of course, I thought I was being smart by laying it out backwards, and then I realized, no, I need to do it all on the front anyway. So I flipped it over and regridded it and tried to start with uh, with the uh, to mirror it. And then I realized, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do it on the wood. I'm going to transfer uh, the 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 pattern or the grid, and then I'm going to draw the draw where it needs to go. And so. What I did is I actually, to get this proper, because it, it is not on a straight or whatever, I... Let's see, let's move this up just a little bit more. There we go. Um, I think it was like that. It's probably the way over there. So what I did is I, I put it on here, which already had the grid, lined it up, and then I was able to do it on a piece of paper that was square, and then I ticked it on either side, and then I could draw my lines. And then once I had the, the, the center, I could go where I needed to here, and... The other thing that was nice is now I had the actual thing. I could put it on here and look and realize, oh, okay, so this is going to already sit three eighths of an inch up off the ground or half an inch, eh, three eighths up off the ground. Anyway, so I don't need to go an inch and a half. I can go an inch because it's already that, you know, things like that by actually looking at it is, is, is really good. So what I did is laid out everything according to what we're going to do, and I marked all the holes where they're going to be, and what I'm going to do right now is just drill a few holes, I'm not going to do all the, the, the heavy duty stuff, but I'm going to just drill a few holes, and I'm going to call the victory, this is a, a weeknight, and I'm getting a reprieve, the kids went to the school concert tonight um, to watch uh, the high school concert, which I have currently zero children in high school, but they went to the concert anyway, and that's, I think that's awesome, because you know, one's a little older, one's a little younger, and, but that's cool to go sport music, and, and I actually thought about going, but I wanted to take care of this anyway. So, a little bit about the, the bench and whatever. I don't want to drill into this. This is just a piece of, crappy piece of uh, particle board that was laying around that will eventually, I'm going to surface this properly, but I don't want to drill into that anyway. So, always get yourself something else to drill onto. Um, and it, it's up to you. Sometimes I like to hang it over the edge anyway. Sometimes I like to just drill down on the surface. Uh, it depends. Eventually I'd love to have a drill press and not have to worry about this. But most important thing is to clamp it all down. Like so. You can use two clamps if you want. Now, what I'm going to be drilling holes for right now is these guys. The, uh, the posts. And there's a bunch of them. There's uh, four pair of them. So that's eight holes. And they're that size. I don't know. So actually, I do know because I put this out. It's actually this bit here, which I believe is a quarter inch. It doesn't matter what it is because I did a test. And this is what I want to say is let's do a test. Let's pretend we don't know and we're not ready. Let's do a test. And let's drill a hole here. Now, I am using a hand drill. I like this hand drill, especially for when I'm doing it for cardboard like this. It's uh, easy to go through anyway. It's very precise, I don't have to worry about it. And I leave, this is a very common bit, so I just leave it in there and I have it for drilling holes like this. This is, um, and it's got a small chuck, so I can't really put anything much bigger in it. And so anything bigger, I would want to go to a power drill anyway, I guess. I'm not sure, but this is just, Nice to have around, it's just always laying there. I never have to change up the bit, it's, and I have control over it. I love a little hand drill. I'm going to take this apart and do a tear down of this sometime. Anyway, in we go, and that's perfect. And I we decided, if you remember, not to do the countersink, we we're going to do it that way. So that's where we're at. And so I am going to drill these holes. And I've already marked them with the square, with the pluses, where they're going to need to go. And so in we go. Now, this wood is not wood, obviously. I keep saying it's basically cardboard. And it is. I should have. All right, so that's the one thing about this. Where's my other clamp? I tell you, I lose everything. I can't believe the stuff that I've lost around here recently. 
It doesn't go anywhere. It's just within like my arm's reach. I just can't find it. I think what I'm going to do here, I would rather hang it off because then I know I'm going through and it doesn't really matter if I bust through on the other side because it's not, it's not uh, going to break. Especially when I'm using this low power of human, slow human power. And I should probably scratch the point with them all, but again, I'm not, yeah, see that's it, so. Oh. Like I said, I'm just kind of giving you an idea of the flow. I don't want people to get discouraged. And some of these things, you know, I worked for a bunch of hours on my buddy's team box that I had showed you, and I actually got the tape clip. Now, I recorded it all, but I don't know how I'm going to release it because it needs to be edited because I didn't set it up to just do a chunk of stuff like this. I actually did the whole project from start to finish, and there's a lot of me running back and disappearing from the camera for a while because I had to go look something up or being called to do something else and I came back and then, you know, it took all day and there's five hours of footage, you know, it really only took a couple hours total and I could edit it down into a 20 minute video or a 15 minute video very easily and I didn't even actually accomplish anything, that's the thing. Uh -huh. Well, I got the paycheck to work, so that's cool. I got the belt. The belt was um, miraculously still intact and just slipped off and it was still good to go. So I got that put back together, cleaned the whole thing up, got it fired up. And I replaced the two capacitors that I knew were bad, and that did not help my power situation. So I was just blindly going at that because I knew I had to do that anyway. If you remember that the, if you plug it in the wall, the AC transformer works and everything's fine. But if you try to use the DC 12-volt jack or the batteries, it does not work. And that's been that way for a long, long time. So I thought the capacitors, which I swapped out, um, might do it, but it wasn't. So I'm going to have to really get in there and figure that out. Which means I'm going to have to learn some stuff about where all that power goes on there and where it links up and how it goes because eventually it's all DC. So, oh, so there you go. That's the uh, that's the holes. Not bad, right? So, no, that's for these these posts, the stands that we're going to use here. And now I've got a couple other things that I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave me to you showing off one other thing, talking about one other thing. I showed you my hand tool there. <laughs> um, I like to use hand tools when appropriate, um, but I'm not afraid to use electricity. But I have always, just by convenience, used hand power tools. And it's, I've, now I wish I had a drill press. And I'm so, so. Now, here's the switch I'm going to use, because I had one around, and I think it's kind of cool. And so what I need to do though is it's going to go here. I've marked where it's going to go, and, and I've also when I did all this stuff, when I marked it on the there, I had it all laid out. So I was taking into account what's going in the back and things that need to have breathing room and stuff is going to be sticking off. And of course, the big power things in there. So what we need to do is figure out what the size is, and I'm going to try and see it's a three eight. So I'm going to take the wah the 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 nut. And that's three eighths, and that fits in there really loose. So that's probably not the right one. And it's probably this seven sixteenths, which I had to buy this special because most regular old drill bit kits go up to three eighths. So this is seven sixteenths. Now we're gonna go up to the real thing, Mr. Ryobi. Why am I using a Ryobi? All right, well. Okay, so first of all, we are not going to drill into the master guy. We're going to test, see, see where that's all about. Well, a couple different schools of thought on tools. Oh, made a mess. If I do any routing that's going outside and that almost was too big. Now, if you notice, the hand drill did not make a mess like that. It did not spit up any, pro any mess, did not, um, no, not a lot of sawdust. Sorry, you didn't even see that. I'll do it again. I will, you know how to drill it. Anyway, we're going to test this. Uh, hmm. Now, you see, that hole is too small for this to go through. So it's not 716s. 
It's gonna have to be a bigger one, and I don't have a bigger one right now, I don't think. So what would be bigger than 7 16 8 16 Half inch? It's not a half inch, so it's gonna have to be... By the way, I like the metric system, I really do, don't get me wrong. I like the metric system, but I think in carpentry and, and, uh, and in things like this, when you're dealing with half and half and half and half, powers of two make a lot of sense out here. Powers of two make a lot of sense in the shop, and, and, and I would hate to lose that counting system. I'm not saying metric's bad, and I think we should use metric in a lot of places, and metric is good for a lot of things, but we should keep our powers of two, and that's what this type of measurement is. So anyway, so 7 16 um, so then it would be, uh, 7 16 would be 14, 30 seconds, so it would be you know, 15, 30 seconds probably, because a half inch is probably too big. Do I have a half inch? Ooh, 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 I have a half inch auger. Alright, this is gonna make a mess. But, let's see you guys. So this is why we practice. This is why we practice. Anyway, um, first school of thought is on tools is you buy two sets of, and this is for hand tools, especially, buy two sets of tools in your life. The first set of tools that you buy. You buy as many as you can for as cheap as possible because you need them all right now because you have nothing. And having a really good hammer is going to do shit if you don't have a screwdriver and a wrench to work with it. Okay, so you, you, you just have to you have to go out and buy it. Buy what you can afford. But when when you're a young man and you're starting out and and you need tools, you you just get as much as you can for as cheap as you can. You go out and you buy the 99 piece kits for 20 bucks, and of course they're gonna bake. I had a hammer one time. When I was done, the hammer was okay. So it doesn't matter. But you need that. You need them, and so you get them. And then as they break, and as you mature, and as you need things, and as you specialize, you add the tools that you need, and then you buy them once more after that. So you buy cheap once to get them all on your plate once and then as they break and as you need special tools and regular you know good things you figure it out and you buy them one at a time or in large or whatever you buy old ones restore them you get new new good stuff one at a time and then that's the last set of tools you ever buy with the power tools a little bit different school of thought going on look at that smoke I wish I could do this with the hand stuff. Okay. Oh, well, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. I guess we could use the half inch. I don't like it, though. I don't like it. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, it's a little wiggly. But I don't think it's 15, 60 or whatever I said, 30 seconds either though. It's probably, I mean, it's probably some millimeter. I don't know, maybe it's not as long as you thought. Anyway, with the power tools, the reason why I have our OB2 tools right now is because 20 years ago, my dad bought me a set of our OB tools for Christmas. The blue box, the blue ones. And I've just evolved from them, and I still have a bunch of the blue, original blue tools, and so I still have some, you know, some of the new green ones. And, and now I just stick with Riley because I have Riley and I know it, and they work okay for me. And then you say, but wait, aren't you in the stage of your life where you should be buying one set of tools for the rest of your life? Well, here's how it works. I kind of am. I take good care of the batteries, I leave them inside, and in the winter time and I keep them properly taken care of so that happens I treat my tools like I'm going to need them for a while so I don't bang them around and toss them around and do stupid things to them I make sure that I take care of them and, and I don't use them ruggedly because I'm not out on a construction site I'm not tossing them around I own them so I'm not trying to ruin them I don't want to spend more money on them I'm replacing them so I take good care of them and I'm just a light user, I really am. I'm not doing really anything out here, but it's, they're perfect for what I'm doing. Now, a few years ago, I went 
Oh, that's, that's what it was. When the, when, when the old NICAD batteries ran out uh, and I was sick of replacing them, I was like, okay, I'm going to either need to buy some new Ryobi ones and stick with that and I'll keep my, my tools and go, you know, do the upgrade. Or maybe I should move to something else. Maybe I should look at one of the other brands that competes with the Ryobi, you know, the, and then, or do I look into, you know, the pro models, the, the, the heavy duty stuff, the really, the really expensive stuff. And what I found was I don't need the expensive stuff and it's just too expensive for me to need. If I was using it a lot, then I would, then, then I would do that. I'd be into the, you know, the, the real Milwaukee's and the Bosch's and the fancy pants stuff and the weird German things that we don't even know their name of and stuff. Uh, but what the advice I got, by the way, I think I'm going to use that half inch. I think that's going to be enough. If I lock that down pretty good, I think I can even get this second. Can I lock that? Oh yeah, I can. All right, that's good. I'm going to use that half inch. That's going to be fine. Instead of trying to go find a um, 3164 drill bit, I'm pushing my luck with that one. Uh, so there are always. They're, they're what I have. I take good care of them so that they last anyway. And I'm not doing a lot with them anyway. And the key is to take care of the battery. And you know what? They're not that expensive. You gotta go get another one anyway. Like, um, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Yeah, I don't want to buy them again. And I haven't had to replace any tools. The only one, actually, the only one that broke was the, was the drill. And I got a drill in the kit when I bought the batteries first time. So that's what I got. And, now I have the router and a, the little battery powder angle grinder. Now the battery powder angle grinder is way better than my old blue battery powered circular saw, which barely cuts anything. But I like my jigsaw, and you know, shout out here's the pump. I mean, it's 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 okay. It's good stuff, and it's it's not great, but it serves my purpose, and I don't need better. Um, I wish I did, but I don't, and then, so I can't justify. The crazy stuff, but as I get into this old vintage stuff, I think I'm going to start looking for older stuff and maybe trying to restore or reuse or find. But you know, the other thing is, is I got a bunch of my dad's old power tools uh, from the '60s and stuff, and they they, they kind of suck. So actually, they're really cool as an novelty. I have to do a video about them. There's this whole thing. Well, this is back in they're all electric. Plug them into the wall, and the most valuable part of the tool was actually the motor. And so they sold you the motor, and then the attached heads with different uh, different things with a, a, a jigsaw or a drill bit or, or a hedge trimmer or whatever they had an orbital sander anyway that's pretty cool it's fun. it's interesting because now the motors are practically free or whatever they're inexpensive you throw them into anything and the batteries are the thing that you make you recycle over and over, you know to different parts because those are the expensive things now the batteries so it's going a long way anyway we got the half inch for that, so okay, let's actually, this will be the last thing we're gonna do then because we're approaching a half an hour. I talked about the tools and I talked about the flow out here. So again, we didn't really accomplish anything. I came out here and talked. Now, I will get into this when um, we, after this video, and I will finish up all the holes and do a bunch of stuff. And, because that's it. I'm not doing how to videos, so I don't have to show you stuff by step, but I'm gonna show, but I am gonna show you basically stuff by step. But just consider it's like you haven't been here in a week and I'm showing you what I've done and what I'm doing right now. And next week I'll have had a bunch of stuff done because that's, I, that's what I've been working on during the week and I'll sh show you something else. Just things like that. We're not doing how to videos, we're doing flow. And I want to encourage everybody to just get out in their garage and take care of business because this is how things get done. And I can't tell you how therapeutic it is, especially when I get done talking and then I put the tapes on and just listen to some music and, and get into the project and figure it out, especially with this one because I've done so much planning. I had, I wake up in the middle of the night. I don't really have dreams per se, but I wake up in the night thinking about things. And I always wake up in the night lately thinking about power supplies and separating orange wires out and stuff and, and from red wires. And whatever. If I want this project to be done. I also have a, another thing where I'm going to need to build some kind of other power supply variable that I can take because my friend has a one of those couches that vibrates from back in the day. They also have a phone in the couch. And so the first thing we're going to do is figure out 
what kind of power it takes and get a power supply for it. So I'm gonna go down there and like, I think, I think we're dealing with a 24 volt DC and it's just missing the transformer power supply. But I gotta, I gotta go down and like see if I can find a label on it and monkey around and just make sure that that's right. But I'm gonna do that, figure that out. And then I do something with the phone. I think somehow I pick up the phone, the phone turns into a remote control where you press the buttons and then it be a computer underneath and it'll Wi-Fi to do the things that Wi-Fi does. I don't know, that's something I was thinking about. But, so yes, I want to encourage, when, when I get take, I, I, I'm sure we all take encouragement from the same awesome guys making videos out there. And so I don't even need to mention Uncle Bumblefuck or you know the, the old bald guy or, or that other old bald guy or uh, yeah, anyway. No, I love these guys. Um, we don't need to mention them because we know who they all are and they're all cross-pollinate to each other and, and, and it's an awesome set of people that form this loose configuration of a community that I am completely inspired by, but I am nowhere near their talent level in video production or actual skill. But that's why I wanted to do this. This is why it's so important for me to do this because you don't have to have a lot of that skill. You don't. You only have to have a little bit of it and you only have a little bit of a curious mind. And a curious mind goes a long way to figure things out because though, because those guys are out there doing what they're doing, the slobs like me can come along and just go, oh, okay, I get it. Now what about this? Oh, oh, there's that video. Oh, oh, so that's what we're at. That's where we're at, and that's why I want to um, keep going. I want to. Uh, so everybody's got their shit together and looking at my videos and going, crap, man, this guy needs some work. Yes, you're right. But everybody who's sitting there going, man, I wish I could get out of the garage, do it. You just look at me and go, well, that poor slob could do it. At least I could do it too. So get out there and do it. Get out there and do it. Go out there and try. Buy some hand tools at the garage sale and get into it. And we're, uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up for uh, that 30 minute mark. So thanks for playing and pass it along. Don't forget, this is in an audio form, smithfamilypodcast.libsyn.com. And if you want to leave a comment, you should, but because no one watches these, no one will. All right, until next time. Bye.